Hey everyone, let's finish up section three today. Hi everyone, Kristen Som here and we are continuing with our Falling for Autumn quilt. So yesterday we finished up that super adorable truck. Oh my gosh, I love it. That hay, I wasn't so sure at first. It looked kind of hard to do and it wasn't at all. It was very easy and so darn cute. Oh my gosh, I love this. And I added a personalization with my name and I showed you how to do that if you chose to. So with that, we it's time to finish up section three. So we have our, some of our blocks. We've got that crisp apples and the truck block and then we have our block from before if you didn't do the um, peace star earlier then go back and watch the peace star tutorial because I did both of them at that time so you will need it now for section three all right and then I think we also need, yep, we need that uh, piece of pumpkin as well. So again, this was one that we, I did two of them together. So if you only did one, that's totally okay, but you'll need it now. So make sure to go back to that tutorial for our section three piece pumpkin. All right, so... We have section one and two completely done. And like I said, we've got all these parts of section three so that we're ready to finish up section three. Section three will be really easy to finish. We just need some filler blocks. I believe there's three of them. Yep, three filler blocks to finish up for today. And that will be very easy. I think that we can do it in one hooping. Um, you can do them individually if you prefer whatever works for you. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about the section three filler blocks. How funny I grabbed it and it felt really big, but it's because I grabbed a couple of packets. <laughs> All right, so section three filler blocks there on page 55. There's some information. It's really actually 54, actually. It says 55, but they're really on 54 um, for so, some of the information. Information. All right, so there, like I said, there's three filler blocks, but one of them is that long one that we did in section two. Yep, section two, um, that long one. So we're, let me just go over those real quick. So the first one, this is for uh, filler block five. All right, so 5A is this yellow striped fabric, all right? And so it is striped. It does show it going this way with the lines going down. Um, for the, when we sew them together. But of course, your, your quilt, your way, but it does show in the directions. If you want to follow along with the book, it's showing the, the lines going down vertically. All right, so this these, each of these are going to be, I believe two and a half by two and a half is what they have in the book. And don't forget on some of the filler blocks, I like you to do them a bit bigger and I'll tell you about that. But on these, you don't. You want them to be exactly the same because we were going to sew all the pieces together. And if they're too big, then you're going to have the middle ones larger and the the two end ones cut off. So you want these to be the same size um, as what it says in the book. So two and a half by two and a half for these. I didn't actually write down the size, but I can see that the um, quilting is two by 10. So that means we want two by two, two and a half by two and a half, sorry, because we're going to sew them together. So two and a half by two and a half. Um, the first one is this yellow stripe. And I did back mine with fusible stabilizer. That's completely optional. We're going to quilt them. So I think it's a good idea, but totally up to you. All right. So that's A. Then for 5B, it is the green. It's a green silky solid, like a sage moss green color. Two and a half by two and a half. I did back mine with fusible stabilizer. We're going to sew these together. Don't forget before we do the quilting. So two and a half by two and a half. That's on B. And then for C, it is a chocolate brown silky solid. No design on it, just a silky solid. And two and a half by two and a half. This is for letter C. So all of these are number five. Like I said, we're going to sew them together. All right. And then for letter D, it is this really pretty purple. It's like a violet purple. And this two and a half by two and a half, I did back mine with fusible stabilizer. Totally up to you. Um, two and a half by two and a half. We're going to quilt them all together. So don't worry about that right now. So two and a half by two and a half. This is for letter D for number five. And then the last one for number five is this um, burnt orange, a dark orange, silky solid. Two and a half by two and a half. This is for letter E for five. All right, and, let, and that's the order that they're going to go in, by the way. So like I said, we are going to sew these all together first, 
and then we will quilt them all right so in that order yellow green brown purple orange okay of course you can do them however you want but that's how it shows in the book so two and a half by two and a half for each of these and we are going to quilt this um, by the way batting don't forget batting so on the batting here's the batting you're going to want one piece of batting that is three by eleven three by eleven for your batting all right because like i said we're going to sew them all together and then we are going to quilt this let me put this over here we are going to quilt this let's see number five we are going to use weave two so it'll be just like that first one we did in section two weave two in a two by ten vertical design weave two in a two two by 10 vertical design. All right. That's the quilting that we're going to use for that. All right. And then we have two other, um, blocks, filler blocks, and this one is number six. So number six is a blue with arrow chevron, um, design to it. I don't remember. It's too hard to see if it's going vertical or horizontal. I will get some glasses and see if I can figure it out, but it, I can't really tell from the picture. I'll be honest I'm um, usually if you look at the cover of the book we can see it a little bit bigger hopefully my cover is broken um, I'm gonna guess down I'm gonna guess that they're going vertical all right that's my guess but I'll show you when when I get there after I look a little bit closer so this one is like I said a navy blue chevron design and we are going to start with this. Let's see. It's a four by four design. So that means that it's a, a five by five. So in the book, it will say four and a half by four and a half. And you can do that if you already cut it and you didn't get a chance to watch the prep video. I recommend cutting it bigger and then it will tack it down because it's not going to tack down. If you've got it at four and a half by four and a half, that tack down the step three and four is not going to do it. It'll go outside of it. And that's okay. You would just tape it in place. But if you want it to be able to tack it down so that you can do that quilting, then you want it to be five by five. So five by five, I did back mine with fusible stabilizer and then your batting, same thing, five by five. You can see it matches up just right. And even if you didn't do your fabric a little bit bigger, you still want your batting to be five by five, all right? And then we are gonna quilt this one this is number six for section three, and we are gonna quilt it with weather four in a four by four horizontal design. Weather four in a four by four horizontal design. That's for number six, all right? And this one, I am going to add to it. You don't have to, it's completely up to you, but it's a nice size block. And so I'm gonna put a little design on it, and I will show you when I um, bring all of my designs together, I'll show you that I'm, the design that I'm gonna choose, and you can decide if you wanna do that or something different or nothing at all. It doesn't matter at all, up to you. All right, so weather four, four by four, horizontal design, five by five on the fabric and on the batting. This is for number six. All right, and then the only other one, very simple, is this green, I like to call it starburst on there. I'm not really sure why, but there is a design on it. It's not a silky solid. It's green with, with what I call starburst on it. All right. And then, um, this one, let me see, it's number seven. So number seven is a four by six quilting design. That means that I, the fabric is five by seven. So that means in the book that it, it will say four and a half by six and a half. So you can either do four by four and a half by six and a half, or you could do it a little bit bigger. Like I suggest at five by seven. Like I said, that will make it so it will tack it down and it makes it a little easier in my opinion to not have to worry about it moving around for the quilting and all of that. All right, so five by seven on your fabric and also on your batting. All right, five by seven for your batting. Even if you did your fabric at four and a half by six and a half, you want your batting to be five by seven. All right, just like the fabric. All right, and this one, we are going to quilt this with fruit five, fruit five in a four by six quilting design in horizontal fruit five. So that's the apples, um, four by six horizontal design. And I'm not going to put anything on this one. It's a pr pretty big fabric and we're going to cut it down a little bit, four and a half by six and a half. So a half inch, but, um, you could absolutely decide to put the, put something on this one. And actually when I show you the one I'm going to put on that blue one, um, I will show you one that would fit on here all right because I did look and, and I found one that will fit on here nicely and you could do that I've decided I'm not going to um, 
although it's not a busy area maybe I'll change my mind but anyway I'll show you when I get there I'll give you some ideas all right so that's all we're going to do today those three filler blocks that's it super simple I'm going to bring you over to the computer so I can show you how to get them all in one hooping if you decide to and how to add to it if you decide to And I'm at my computer now and I'm going to open up embroidery software and show you how to merge those three filler blocks together and also how to add something to it if you choose. So I'm going to open up in Brilliance Essentials, that's the embroidery software that I prefer. Down here at the bottom it shows the hoop size that it opens up to and I'm on my 10 by 10 hoop. Um, that's not going to work for me so I'm going to go up to this preferences folder, click on my 8 by 12 hoop I think would probably be the best one I'm gonna do that um, 8 by 12 and say okay and then go up to this compass button and click H so that it zooms into that that hoop all right and you can see down here at the bottom your hoop size all right so we're gonna start by bringing in the first quilting design so that is the biggest one so I'm gonna go to merge stitch file and we're looking for weave two let's see weave two and I use Pez and we want the 2 by 10 in a vertical design. <clears throat> 2 by 10 weave 2 vertical right there. Double click on that and it goes to the center. I'm going to go ahead and just move it over. I'm going to use my arrow key, my left arrow key to just bring it over to the side. All right and while I'm here I'm going to go ahead and change these um, the blues and oranges so that we can do a color sort after. So I'm going to go ahead and click on one one, click on the color, and the first color that comes up for me is dark aqua, and then one two, click on the color, and as I always tell you, it doesn't matter what color you're using, and mine comes up as Filtech Glide colors. Um, you can sit there and choose colors if you want, but I'm just going to click the first color that comes up for me. Um, sorry. Um, the first color that comes up for me um, so that I don't have to waste any time. So for the first one for me for the orange is blaze. I'm going to say okay. Then one three, click on the color. And I've already used dark aqua, so I'm going to use the second color down, which is marine. And then one four, click on the color. And the second color for me is oriole because I already used blaze. Say okay. And then I'm going to keep these colors different. Um, one is that uh, with the five different uh, fabrics and then one is blue and one is green. So I'm going to just keep these different so that they don't color sort. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the color. I'm going to choose the first color that comes up for me which is sprout and say OK. So that one is all done. I'm going to click outside so that nothing is selected. I'm going to go ahead and close one. That one is done. So now I'm going to go to merge stitch file. And I'm going to bring in the next one, which is number six, so weather four. So I'm going to close up weave two and look for weather four and embroidery files block by block and then Pez. And I want four by four in a horizontal design. So I'm just scrolling down. There we go, four by four, weather four, and I want horizontal, so this one. That is so pretty, I love that. All right, and I'm just going to click on this, and I'm going to bring it up. I have to click on the stitching, and I'm going to bring it over to the very right-hand side up at the top so that I've got some room between here and room between the next one. And then remember, I want to change these colors again, and I want to use the same colors I did on the first one, um, on one through four so that those will group but then on two five I don't want that color to be the same because as I mentioned I'm one is multicolors one's green and one's blue so I want those to not join so I'm going to click on two one if you don't remember the colors you used before you can always open up this first one and it'll show the colors there so I'm going to click on the color and I know I used dark aqua and say okay two two click on the color and I used blaze Two, three, click on the color. I want the second color down, which is marine. Two, four, second color down is oriole. And then for two, five, I'm going to click on the color. And I don't want sprout, I want sea green for this one. All right, so again, just so that those first four will join, but that last one will not. That's why I'm doing that. All right, I'm going to just close that up. 
and click outside so nothing is selected. That one is done and ready. Now I'm going to go to Merge Stitch File and I'm going to bring in the next one, which is Fruit 5. So I'm going to close up Weather 4, open Fruit 5, Embroidery Files, Pez is what I use for my machine, and I want a 4x6 horizontal design. So I'm just scrolling down, 4x6 horizontal, 4x6 Fruit 5 in horizontal right there, that apples. All right, and then I'm just going to click on the stitching and bring it down and um, have it close to the hoop but not going over the hoop. Make sure, absolutely sure that you're not over the hoop. All right, this one looks like it might be a little close. I'm going to go ahead and bring it up just a tiny bit. Okay. All right, so that one, now I need to do those colors again. So I'm going to click on 3-1, click on the color I want dark aqua. 3-2, click on the color I want blaze. And say, okay, 3-3, three, three, click on the color I want marine. 3-4, click on the color I want oriole. And then 3-5, click on the color I want the third color down, which for me is mint. And say, okay. So that was quick and easy. That Those are done. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and do a color sort. Although, I have to think about this. Because I'm going to bring in a design, and I want to be able to to join it, um, I want to align it with that, with these. So actually I'm going to do something, um, you've seen me do it before, I'm sure. I'm going to go ahead and click on all three designs. So I clicked from the bottom and dragged up. I'm going to say control C to copy them. And then I'm going to open up a new page. So file new page. And then I'm going to say control V like victory to paste those. So I just want to have them in two different, um, areas so that I can, um, you'll see. So, so I'm going to click on this first tab and I'm going to go ahead and do a color sort because I know I don't need to do a color sort later when I bring in that design. I just want these to color sort so that I am cutting the batting all at once. I'm cutting the, um, every, I'm doing all of that part, the batting and the tack down and all of that at the same time. So I'm going to go ahead and do a color sort right now. So we've got 15 color steps. You can see them down here at the bottom right hand corner. Um, and so I'm going to go to utility color sort and it thinks, 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 and it says it's reduced it by eight color changes. So I want to make sure and check that. But in the meantime, let me tell you, tolerance is at zero, force applique, those are not chosen. Make sure you have the same settings as me to get the same set, the same results as what I've gotten. Now I'm going to click new view so that I have a third tab so that I can check and see what it's done. And you can see it created a third tab. So now they're all in one design. I'm going to open that up and just quickly check and make sure it did what it should have done. So there's our placement for our batting, our tack down for our batting, and see they're all grouped together. Placement for our main fabric, tack down for our main fabric, and then the three quilting designs. So that worked out perfectly. All right, so I am going to go... Let's see, I'm going to go to that first one um, just because they're all separated. So just a reminder, this first one has got the three quilting designs and they're all separated. The second one has them all the same. Um, and then that third one, so really you could use one or two. Um, that third one is when they're joined. All right, so one or two, it doesn't matter. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go to merge stitch file. Now I want to, before I do this, actually, I want to show you what I've come up with. So if you open up a web browser and go to stitchtopia.com, I have a few ideas of what um, what I, I can show you what I'm going to do. And actually I have ideas for the seventh one. So let me show you, let's see if I just control C. I'm going to just open up another tab so that you can see all of them. All right, so here's if what I did is right from the home page, I'm clicking on fall, or you can go to shop on sale and then fall. Either way, whatever works. All right, and then there's a lot of really cute fall designs, and I showed this in one of our other tutorials as well. And so the one that I've chosen, it's called Hello Fall. All right, and I think there were a few options. I'm just going to type up at the top since I don't rem remember exactly which one I found. So I'm going to click type hello fall. All right. And there's hello fall right there. I think that is the one that I've chosen and I'll check it to make sure, but I think that this is the one that I purchased. And so you would just 
purchase that, add it to your library, and I'm going to show you how to unzip it also because I haven't done that yet. Um, but that's what I was thinking for this number six. So remember, number six is that blue one, and it's a uh, four by four design. So this will work out really well. All right, so I'm going to shrink this down, and I'm going to find my download. I'm going to move this over. All right, I think it was right around here. Let's see, right there, Hello Fall. So if I double click on the zipped folder, after you purchase it, you would download it to your desktop or wherever you're gonna be able to find it easily. And then we would unzip it. So you, on my PC, I double click on it and then I click Extract All, Extract, and then boom, there it is. All right, so that was super easy. I'm gonna close that just so that I can delete the one that um, is zipped because I've already unzipped it. I don't need that clogging up my um, computer. So I'm going to double click on the unzipped folder and it's right there. Embroidery file. Oh, that's not it. Sorry. I clicked on the autumn. Sorry. Something I was using earlier. It's right here. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, so hello fall. And there is our designs right there. So there's the four inch, five, six, seven, eight, nine inch. So I'm going to click on this four inch and actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to click it and drag it over to my workspace here and it goes right to the center. Now I can close that and see that is a really cute design and it will fit nicely on this block. It's actually a little big. It looks like I'm surprised. So what I want to do is I want to align it. And that's what I was saying is I want to make sure that this is centered and you can't do it on this untitled three where they're all done in one design. You can't align it because now it, they're all together. So we, you, to do an align and distribute, you have to have it on the um, one that is separated. All right. I hope that makes sense. So to be, and you can always just eyeball it. It's fine. Excuse my computer making sound here. All right, so um, I'm going to go ahead and find that that quilting design, which I know is number two. So I'm going to click on number two, and then I'm going to hit the control button on my keyboard and click on number four so that I have number two and number four, the quilting design and the embroidery design. And I'm going to go ahead and go to Utility, Align and Distribute, and I believe it's Center, Center. Let's see, Apply. And see it moved it so it moved it down so when I eyeballed it and wasn't working at trying to get it just right but um, it, it was too high so that made it so that it is exactly right so that's perfect now that one's done because I don't want to do an align and distribute and I can go ahead and what I can do so if you're only going to do that one you could hit control C because you know where it's lined up and then go back to that untitled three tab where they're all grouped together as one and say control V and see what it did. It goes right to the center. All right. It, it saved that, put it at the end after all of our quilting, after we've done that color sort and oh, you know what? I, I grouped there. They're together. I made a mistake. So this first one, look at, we're going to have this um, doing it twice. I didn't realize that it had them both. So I'm going to click on um, undo this arrow right here. Undo. I don't want that. I made a mistake. So untitled one, when I, I used the align and distribute, I have to have that quilting design and the embroidery design together to be able to align them. But then you have to click outside and only get the embroidery design. That was my mistake. Sorry about that. So once you have just the embroidery design and it's already all lined up, we're going to say control C and then go to that untitled three tab and say control V and you can see it goes right to the center of that one block. So then I can click outside and I have all of my quilting in one design and then I've got that um, new added design that my preference of doing something personalized to my quilt, I have that afterwards. So that's perfect. Now you can be done right now. You can be done with just your quilting, whatever works for you. Or if you want, you can add something to this one as well. It's totally up to you. So my first thought was I didn't want to, um, that you have to keep in mind that the fabric is a green with starbursts on it. It's kind of a busy fabric, not really, but a little bit. So you want to keep that in mind. Um, but it is a big, you can see it's a big piece of fabric that could use something cute on it. It's longer so that using a square design is not going to work. 
This is a little bit big. I'm going to shrink this down. So notice how it, it goes over just the tiniest bit. I'm going to actually shrink this down just a tiny bit. I should have done that before I did my align and distribute, but that's okay. You, you can learn from my mistake. You could do your, your shrink down first and then do your align and distribute. Either way, I'm not going to be super perfectionist about it. All right, so I just want to make sure that it's within that batting is what I want. All right, so that looks great. I'm happy with that. I could even bring this in just the tiniest bit more. Might be a bit much. Okay, anyway, sorry. Okay, so on this one, I want to just point out that finding a 4x4 four four design is easier than finding a 4x6 design, but I found a couple for you. So if you wanted to add something on, I haven't decided yet if I'm going to, but I wanted to show you some ideas. So this pumpkin pie fixes everything. I don't like pumpkin pie, and that's why I'm not sure about it, but my husband loves pumpkin pie. So I might add this on. So this is super cute, and see, it's a long design. And if you click on it and go down here, it'll tell you the dimensions exactly. All right, so if since our design, our quilting design, is 4 by 6, you want it to be 4 by 6 or less. And here it is, 3 and a half by 5. That would work just fine, all right? Mm -hmm. So that's an option. That one is definitely an option. Another one that I found is this Nuts About Fall. So you can see it's not a square design. And when I scroll down here, there is a 2.87 by 5. So that would fit really well. Or you could do the 3.44 by 6 and then shrink it down. But I think I would do it a little bit smaller. So that's one. So here's that first one, Pumpkin Pie Fixes Everything or Nuts About Fall. There's another one. Look at this. How cute is this gnome? So that gnome is an option as well. Um, and I checked the size. So what was it? I think 3.78. So it's a little bit wider than the other two, um, but it still would fit 3.78 times 5. So that gnome, if you like gnomes, that is super cute. I love gnomes, but I'm leaning against doing that one. Um, all right, so that was it. Those were the three that I found that fall with it, that are within the fall theme that pumpkin pie or nuts about fall or this cute little gnome holding a pumpkin pie. So if you wanted to add one of those, you could absolutely do it. I showed you how I haven't purchased one yet. I haven't decided if I want to do one. I'm thinking I'm going to do this pumpkin pie one because my husband loves pumpkin pie. I think that will be really cute. All right, so excuse me for a minute while I buy this. And by the way, if I'm going to give you a code. If you put that code in, it helps my um, Stitchtopia account somehow. I'm not totally sure. It's a new thing with them. But I will get, add that information in the video editing process. Okay, I'm back. So I did buy the pumpkin pie design. I downloaded it. So I'm going to go ahead and extract that super quick. And I'm going to import that in using that same align and distribute feature that I used before. Let's see, where did it go? Right there. I'm going to delete the other one just so I know I already opened it. Okay, so open this and... I'm going to use, let's see, did I want the 4 inch or the 5 inch? I'm going to use the 5 inch. So I'm going to just grab it and drag it over to my desktop. Not my desktop, to my workspace, I should say, on um, and Brilliant. So I'm going to go ahead and just click on that, and I'm going to bring it down here and make sure it fits. Yeah, that looks great. All right, so again, I want to do that align and distribute, and actually I can't do it on this one, so I'm going to delete that. I want to make sure I'm on the right tab. Right now I'm on the tab that they're already um, grouped together. So I'm going to go to Untitled One, and I'm going to um, drag it over. Shrink up this window a little bit so I can see better. Just grab it and drag it over, and it goes to the center. So I'm just going to click on the stitching and bring it down. And actually, you don't even have to do that because we're going to align it anyway. So this, this was the third quilting design. So I'm going to click on number three and click the control button and then click on number five so that those both are together. And I'm going to go to Utility, Align and Distribute, and Center, Center, Apply. Ooh, it barely moved, just like the tiniest bit. So you could... Um, visually center that one. It won't be a problem. 
All right, so let's just see. Then make sure to click outside so that nothing is selected. And I'm just checking the size. It looks like it's really good. I could make it a tiny bit smaller, but it does fit within the batting. It looks pretty good. How cute. And it's got those apples in the background. It'd be kind of cute if it was an apple pie instead, but that is really cute. I like it. That looks really good. All right, so I'm just going to click on that design, just the number five design. I'm going to say Control C and go to Untitled 3 tab and then hit Control V like victory to paste it. And it goes right where we already aligned it. All right, so that worked out perfectly. I've got my three quilting designs all grouped together and then I have each of the two designs. All right, so I'm going to do a file, save stitch file as and I'm already in my quilt, so that works out perfectly. I'm going to say filler blocks, filler blocks three, section three fillers, something like that, whatever you want to call it. Um, looks like I don't have my other one stitched. All right, so anyway, name it whatever you're going to be able to find it easily. Say save, my machine is not on, or I would send it there, um, or you can transfer it to a USB stick, and we're all ready to get started.
how are you doing with your goal? So my goal is weight loss and I'm afraid to get on the scale. I'll tell you in all honesty, I'm afraid. And so I'm going to wait. I'm going to give myself a few days to try and, and work it off. Um, but we ate so much yesterday. Oh my gosh. Like all my goal was just out the window yesterday. We all do that sometimes, right? Where none of us are perfect and I am far from perfect. And so we went to, what did we do yesterday? We did football. So I worked part of the day while my husband watched football. And then we went to a friend's house and watched football there. 49ers against the Cowboys. I'm from California. So um, it was a pretty good game. But oh my gosh, all of us brought food. And like I brought this um, delicious macaroni and cheese that is really unhealthy. Um, and I brought cookies that have caramel inside of them. What else? There was something else that I brought. I don't remember, but someone else brought a cheesecake. Someone else brought a lemon meringue pie. Um, oh, and the host made a tiramisu. There was so much food, so much food and bread and oh, donuts. <laughs> My husband brought donuts. Somebody asked him to bring a, a dozen Krispy Kreme donuts. And I'll tell you, I'm not personally a fan of Krispy Kreme donuts. Sorry, but I'm not. I like cake donuts. I like old fashioned donuts. That's my favorite. But anyway, there was just food everywhere. And I had a little bit of this and a little bit of that and just ate and ate until I felt like I might explode, like literally did not feel good the rest of the night. And my husband too, and everybody there, we all just ate way too much. So I did really bad, <laughs> really bad. So, um, so I'm trying to drink extra water today and eat extra, extra healthy all this week to try and work it off. Um, but I did do my run this morning. I did a run with John Peel, iFit trainer in Romania. And it was like, 2.16 miles, something like that. I don't remember, but it was like this straight run. And, and there was also a lot of elevation. I was really surprised. I think my, um, my trainer went to 13%, a 13% incline. So it was, it was a, it was a good workout. Let's just say that it was a good workout and I needed it after that day of bad eating. So tell me, um, I know that we're not all perfect and don't tell me you're perfect because I need, I need a little bit of inspiration right now, but I want to know what is something that you've done recently to mess up your goal, right? Just help me feel better about what I did. <laughs> so share with me, did you eat something bad this last weekend? Did you do something that wasn't good towards your goal? I want to hear about it. And my shirt today, this is do what makes you happy. <laughs> That was definitely my goal yesterday, right? With eating junk food and playing, having fun with the, the whole football game and all my friends there. And we had so much fun, so much fun. Definitely did a lot of um, things that made me happy this weekend. I went on a bike ride with my club. I went on a hike with my husband, did a lot of things that were um, fun and, and makes you happy because the winter is coming and I'll tell you the winter here in Idaho it goes on forever and ever and ever <laughs> I'm not ready I'm so not ready so we had this gorgeous weekend absolutely beautiful weekend definitely something that makes me happy um, and then tomorrow I think our rain starts and it starts getting really cold and not ready for it so make sure that you're fitting in doing things that make you happy I'll add information about the shirt, by the way. So underneath this video, I will add um, in the video notes, I will add a direct link of where you can get this design.